what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm actually going to go ahead and fit each of these up, and I'm going to center drill them just so we're ready. Uh, it acts as a counter bore too. So uh, this first one's going to be a three sixteenths, and I've already set it up for that. So if we just thread our collet back in, these are long-winded collets. You hate to have to change them too much. I had. Uh, put the half inch collet back in and just set a piece of scrap in there that I'd faced it off so I went ahead and centered up these tools so they should be set and ready to go with the exception of depth um, we're probably going to start with this little one over here just because it'll give us a, a good uh, counter bore or a good center point without wandering too much this is a 5 16th we're just going to use it as a as a um, kind of a counter bore or a lead in on all of them and then this is one under 3 sixteenths and I've got a reamer over here that we're going to fit after we get it drilled to 3 sixteenths Ooh, not going to go that way so if we start off here with our little pilot and hopefully we've got these all set to, to length the stops are released enough yeah it looks like that'll start pull this collet out of here let's take a look at it but it should be ready to slit now we won't be able to check and actually see how concentric it is until we've gone ahead and uh, slitted it and set it back in but I don't see a problem with that it looks pretty good So we'll clean them up, take them back over to the bench, and then we'll have to set them up in the, uh, probably the spin indexer on the mill to cut our slots is probably what we'll use. So they're getting awful close to being done. I'm going to go ahead and spot the rest of them, and I've got one other one that I think I'm going to go ahead and do while I'm here, which is still another standard one. It's going to be a 5 16 So I'm going to go ahead and do those. Anyway, this is the procedure we use. All right, well, I don't know that I've ever really showed us running the mill. And uh, I don't use this mill, or I haven't up until now used this mill a whole lot. Um, and I haven't tooled it exceptionally well yet. So this is, like everything else, still a work in progress. 
but we're going to at least attempt to use it to slot our cutters. Now this is the index shaper head. This is the one I've been working on. Uh, we just built this adapter to adapt this four jaw tuck to it. And I'm just utilizing the tooling and equipment that I've got available to me. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get this indicated in. Alright, well I haven't shown hardly anything being run on this little mill, if anything at all, just because I don't, uh, I haven't run it a whole lot. Now, uh, I decided I was going to use it to cut the slots, which is why I've done all this extra fixturing and everything, why we adapted this chuck to, to the uh, index. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit more here at the end, but um, I've already got the first slot cut. Now my original idea was I was going to run on a uh, one inch arbor, I was going to run a slitting saw. And the only slitting saw I had that was appropriate was, was a used slitting saw, and it didn't want to cut at all. So what I've done is I've just switched it over to an arbor with a, with a stack of um, small slitting saws. And I've got the first one cut already. I'm going to go ahead and index it up to the next position. And I'll move the camera around and show you a little more of that because it's, uh, I can't get back to adjust it with the, with the camera there and everything. So... I'll show a little bit of that run and not a whole lot just because we're doing machining and I want to get these done. So the main the main thing for this project is to get these collets done. So we'll show a little bit more. We're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a fair amount with this mill here in the future, and uh, we're doing some some tooling for it and things like that. So um, we'll be seeing quite a bit more of all the Atlas machines in the shop. But anyway, for right now, let me move this camera around and we'll get a little different perspective and we'll see if we can't get these last two slots cut. So now it's just going to be a rinse and repeat. I'm taking very light cuts with this. The main problem is it wants to uh, load up. Once you start cutting a little bit, it wants to load up these little slitting saws. So you have to keep them blown out.
Let me uh, wipe it off and blow it off, wipe it off, and let's see what it looks like. Well, here's the first one. That's what it looks like on the on the end of it. Got just a little more to do to it. I've got to deburr the inside a little bit, and uh, I lightly lightly deburred the outside here, which I think is is plenty good. Now I probably don't need to. Let's see if we can see here. Probably don't need to split them down quite that far. Um, that's more like two inches. It looks like rather than the rather than the inch and a half I was shooting for. Yeah, we're inch and three quarters, so we're a little bit farther than we really need to be splitting them. But uh, all in all, that looks really good. I thought that I'd shot footage of running those three C collets and running a dial indicator on them in the in the little Atlas turret lathe when I uh, when I finished them up. And either I didn't get the camera started, I've misplaced that footage, whatever the case may be. Um, which is really convenient because it's not as perfect as what I thought they were, what I thought they should be. Now, um, I was really disappointed when I initially put them up and the, set them up in the lathe because I was showing almost two thousandths run out on them, and uh, I thought, well, what's wrong here? And I compared them to a Chinese collet, and they were all about the same. You know, there was no great improvement or much less on the collets that I had. So I got to checking, and when I had the collets out, why I checked on my adapter and on the on the spindle itself of the lathe, and I find about a thou and a half run out there. So um, it's I'm 99% sure it's the bearings in the headstock itself. Which when we initially put this lathe together, why I said I wasn't doing anything with them then. If they became an issue later on, why we may have to go back and revamp at those bearings. And and I'm probably going to repeat this in in other sh footage that I've shot right at the, right after this little clip. But um, what I actually ended up with with the collets themselves, I'm thinking is just about a half thou. So it's it's on par with the other collets that I purchased, the cheap collets that I had. Um, so I'm not dissatisfied with that at all. I think they came out just fine. I think they're going to work just fine. Um, a lot of times I harp on what quality of precision or what level of precision we want out of our machines, and especially these older Atlas machines, um, even if they've been rebuilt, why they're still a worn machine. So with the amount of runout that I've got on them, at some point we may go back and rebab at those bearings. That will be a project in itself, and I'm not going to do it right now. Because the reality is, with 2000 run out on what I'm going to produce on this turret lathe, most of the things that are coming off of it are less than three quarters of an inch, and usually they're a half inch long from what, I'm running, what I've been running so far. Um, part of the products that I run on there, and like I say, short production runs, they get turned both on the bore and externally. So they come out perfectly acceptable for the level of, of accuracy that I want out of them. So I'm very happy with it. So that's my little excuse for why you're not actually seeing me an indicator on there and hopefully I'm explaining why I'm happy with that. Um, so anyway, let's go back to watching the rest of the video and uh, hopefully enjoy. Well, we're finishing up these little collet projects. I got the first two completely done. And there they are, all marked up. And I'd shown the 5 16 before. We've etched the 3 16 too. And uh, it uh, they both run about the same. You know, like I say, I show almost two thousandths or just about two thousandths with an indicator on the on the little atlas lathe when I indicate off of the off of the uh, adapter for the lathe without a call at Y. We've got about a thou and a half there run out and, and that's as I said before is um, that's run out in the lathe bearings, you know, that's that's something that I'm not going to address now when we put that lathe together, why I said that we may have to go back and re-pour the Babbitt bearings in there. And at some point I will, but the reality is for what this jaw, what this lathe is going to be used for and what I'm using it for now, um, as a turret lathe with the, the inch and a half long pieces that are primarily being turned on it, and uh, 
usually it's both IDOD or being being machined down and everything. It gives perfectly acceptable results. You know, it's not a it's not a Harding tool room lathe or something like that where we can where we're going to hold super tight tolerances. But for what it's uh, what it's intended to do, I think it's going to be fine. You know, if I find problems down the road with it, why we'll uh, we'll make some adjustments to it. We may have to tear the headstock down and repour the bearings in them. But anyway, for right now, I'm perfectly happy with what we've got. We're going to continue with building tooling. Um, been working with the Atlas mill a little bit, and you saw that when I was cutting the cutting the slots for this. And um, you know, I've I've pretty much finished up those projects. One of the one of the other things I had done that I did a video on, and I don't think I've edited it yet, was building an adapter plate for the four jaw chuck. And this is that four jaw chuck. So uh, there's going to be one more adapter plate, or at least one more adapter plate turn for that little four jaw craftsman chuck. And it's going to be a one in ten, so it will fit on the index head for the this design for the mill, and it will fit the six inch Atlas lathe, of which I don't have one. And if I acquire one, fine. If I don't, I'm not I'm not really looking for a six inch anyway. And um, it will fit on the milling machine spindle, although I don't know that I'll ever utilize it on the milling machine spindle itself. But anyway, we've got one more of those to to turn out, which I'm probably going to do here in the next day or two. Um, now I've marked these uh, while I was making stencils and uh, etching stuff. I made one for on, on the adapters, and this is that adapter plate, and it just says for jaw to shaper indexer, because someday I'm going to be gone and there'll be some Atlas machines here, and I want my son. Hopefully he's going to have enough interest in them that he's going to retain this little, the little Atlas portion of this shop anyway, and um, I want him to know what those go for because so many times we. You, we go to a yard sale, an estate sale, you know, picking up somebody's life collection of, of tooling and equipment. And um, if this stuff isn't marked, if we don't know what it is, why it's just so much junk. And uh, so with the Atlas stuff anyway, why I'm going to try and make it a habit of, uh, of marking what I've got so we know where it goes. So this adapter plate will go with the shaper itself. And... Uh, that little four jaw will get swapped around between whatever. But anyway, that's where we're at. So I'm going to throw this one in the bluing tanks. I've got a bunch. I've got a batch of tooling that I think I'm going to blue up, and I may do that over the weekend. We'll see how that progresses. But anyway, hopefully you found this little series interesting. Um, if you did and haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, and if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.